Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rob Has a Podcast. We are here for our postseason coverage of Big Brother Canada 10. I'm your host, Tarn Armstrong, and the first of our postseason interviews is going to be with the first juror, Herman. Uh, very excited to talk to Herman. Um, he was a big presence on the season, uh, really one of the major oppositions uh to uh to 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 kevin's reign of terror so uh it will be uh, it'll be fun to talk to herman uh, i will have some more of these coming up as well uh we've got uh hopefully a a big deep dive planned with kevin that we will do soon um and uh really as many of these other jurors as i can get my hands on uh as we talk about um you know what was happening in the jury house and and what was happening during the game uh it's such a good season i feel like we should uh really make a meal of it. So, uh, here we go. Let's talk to Herman. Herman, how you doing? Woo, I'm back, baby. I'm outside the house. Uh, I'm feeling great. I, uh, oh man, it's just a whole, it's a whole different experience being on the outside just with, you know, reconnecting with pre-jury, um, you know, engaging, uh, with the fans and stuff and just seeing kind of how you were perceived. Uh, it's a pretty, it's pretty incredible. Any any surprises so far? Uh, you know, I I don't know. I feel like I got a lot of love. Like there's there's I I do feel like uh, I wanted it to. Re- so I know there's only so much that makes the show. Um, I guess I didn't really realize how big that the you know the live feed community is and <laughs> and how people like they really seen like all the crazy shit I was doing. <laughs> um, and uh, and I'm just happy that that resonated with everybody because you know that was that was me. You can't fake it on the live, so you can't fake it. I mean, some people can, but uh, yeah, that's just me. So I'm happy that they they like the majority of people liked like me. <laughs> yeah, is a little scary to know that people are watching your every move. Yeah, like there was. This is the thing. I think it would have been scarier if I knew about like the live feeds mm, and yeah. what that was about. You know, so I had no idea. Um, I think at one point there's like a couple of quotes of me being like, "Yo, I swear I heard like six million people watch the lives." You know, and everyone's like, "This guy has no idea what he's talking about." <laughs> I really had no idea. So if I knew like what that community and the fandom was like, then maybe I would have been a little more like like reserved, I think, or, or, or careful. Um, so I think it's kind of, it's kind of nice to not know and then just go in and just, you know, be a free, free spirit and do what you, do what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, granted Kevin, Kevin knew all about it and this was Kevin on the live feed. I'm a winter baby in the winter. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. I mean, Kevin knew what he was doing. Kevin knew. <laughs> and like even the camera talk stuff, like everyone's like, yo, you did a really good job camera mm. talking and doing all that stuff. And that, like, shit, I didn't know if any of that was going to be anywhere. Like, I was just, that's like a coping mechanism for me to, like, yeah. talk, talk through my, like, not trauma, but, like, talk mm-hmm. through, like, the things I'm feeling so that I don't, like, you know, explode or, like, you know, have a have a reaction. So, and, it, and I mean, it turned out there's some of the best moments are from some of the camera talks, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've I've got a couple of my favorite sound clips from you. Uh, we've got this one. You are absolutely outside your mind, fam. Outside your mind, fam. <laughs> I will hold my cards here. I will take my spot on the block. I will play and field deal. Put myself off, and then I will see your ass next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You know, I still haven't I still haven't seen that episode. Um, I just saw the, that clip uh, mm. yesterday for the first time um yeah i uh oh yeah that was me fully geeked up ready for, <laughs> ready for the smoke i was ready you just learn you're going on the block it's just like a, yeah that was fun i mean that was the thing like e- like you know whether it was to the cameras or uh just socially or in the game you you brought a lot of energy i think to to the game you were always playing hard you're always like uh talking to people um was that something that you like intended to do going in yeah, like I basically, I knew like socially just with my skill set, I knew that I could, you know, humor is like a big thing for me. So like if you, if I, if I can make you giggle or laugh or whatever, I, I feel like immediately that wall comes down. Um, and then I wanted, so I wanted to get in there and then I wanted people to understand that I was a threat. Like I did want to be a threat. Um, I did want to be able to shield people. Uh, you know, winning the first HOH was absolutely not, not in the, in the cards for me, I, I made a whole map, uh, in my, 
Yeah, I made a whole map, and literally the first line says, at all costs, do not win first HOH. It's a waste of an HOH. That's the first line. And night one, my strategy had to change, and everything that I had planned, like, moved up a week. So, so my week, I was supposed to be week two HOH in my mind, so that was week one. Big Alliance was supposed to be week three. That was week two. Uh, Showman's uh, or Flirtman's, that was supposed to be week three. You know, that was week two. So that was, like, the Steph thing. Then the seven was week two. Like, it was – everything got, like, fast forward on me. Um, so that was, that was a lot, but I did want people to definitely know that I was, I was there to compete and I was going to play the game. So what's this map? How, how much, so, okay. How much knowledge? Okay. We're going we're gonna to look at the map. No one's seen this before. You're getting an exclusive. Oh boy. Okay. So it's pretty big. Hold on. So I made this, basically I got 25 pieces of paper. Just give me a second here. It's an absolute shit show. Is it going to be re reversed? Um, I'm not sure. Oh boy. <laughs> like it's a full thing. And I made this basically when I was quarantined before getting into the house. Let's see if this even works. Oh Sorry, man. Sarah. No, no worries. Oh yeah, she's coming. Here we go. So in infamously, Kevin Martin comes on to season five with uh, a binder that he put together of all the competitions. Um, this is uh, this is Herman's version of Kevin's binder, I think. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, we got it. Here we go. So he's a little banged up from travel. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But basically. Wow. There was this massive map. So, like, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll just come up real close. There um, we go. Survive week one, but don't win HOH. Waste of an HOH. Go with majority. <laughs> and then week two was... Uh, Find final two, final okay. Two, right? And then just kind of worked my way through it. So, and then it was win at all costs. Oh, I was going to call an alliance in week four. It's kind of folded up there, but I was going to call it the end gamers. If you can see it right there. Mm. And I tried it. No one loved it. So <laughs> I had to go a different, different route, but yeah, that's, that's the map, man. It, it, uh, I thought there was going to be 15 people. There were 16 for mm. some reason. I thought HOH just complained POV. So I thought daddy was just going to take home three and three. Obviously that was not the case. So yeah. here we are. So, so how, how well did you know the show ahead of time? Obviously didn't know like a ton about the live feeds, but like how, how many seasons have you watched? Yeah. So I'd watch, I'd say like I was a casual fan. Like some years I got really into it. Mm -hmm. uh, some years I just like, I don't know. I didn't, didn't love it, but watched a lot of the early U S ones, um, you know, growing up. And then I went and, uh, watched season one and two, I believe. No, I think it was just maybe two. And then I watched season six because Marin was on it mm -hmm. and he was from Edmonton. And then I watched, um, I watched nine as well. Really got into nine. And that was like, cause I had, I had tried out for nine mm -hmm. and I'd gotten pretty far. Um, so I was like, who replaced me? Like, who was, you know, who was my, who was my character? But I don't, I don't know if there was anyone. I just think yeah, I don't, I don't, nobody really strikes a chord in terms of, uh, filling that, that character type. Which I yeah. think is a good thing because, you know, I, I feel like uh, I feel like the casting has been very good the last few years. And, right. um, you know, it, when they're trying to fulfill a certain role, I feel like it's not not going to be as good. Right. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people have um, with with the show and the casting and stuff, they they play multiple kind of multiple roles. Like it's not that, that generic, you know, that, that East Coast, that this, mm -hmm. that, this is that, but there's a lot more uh, like multiple kind of multi-talented kind of people in there so it's it's just a uh, it's just wild having everyone in the same house yeah so um when you i i assume when you got close on season nine did you like were you paying like extra attention to the season in terms of like okay i might do this again next year i might get on i'm gonna really start to think about what i want to do if i do get on you know i i was pretty pretty choked <laughs> that i didn't get on yeah uh, it's a whole thing, right? It's a whole, it's a whole process, mm -hmm. right? So, um, 
yeah, I was watching it more so as a, as a fan, honestly, like I was, I studied the game a bit. I knew what I wanted to, I wanted to be really loyal. Like, you know, the, it's like the sunsetters were, were pretty, eh. Off and on. <laughs> I'm a casual fan, but I just like, I really liked who I liked in that season. I just like rocked with them. And I just mm-hmm. knew like going into the house, I wanted to, I really wanted to be one of the, being in power. I felt like I could kind of dictate the direction early on of the house. Um, well, I felt like I could anyway. So if I just made that big alliance and that would be, that'd be fine. Right. Um, but yeah, watching it, I wasn't watching it from the lens, like, Oh, like this is what I would have done. I was, I really was watching it as a fan. So until, yeah. And then as soon as auditions came up for the next year, I wasn't going to do it. And two days before I was like, fuck it. I'll just send in a video. And here we are. Here we are. Uh, no, it's, it's cause it's super interesting because, um, basically, the the narrative of the season for a while seemed like, you know, here's Herman who wins the first HOH. Uh, even though you didn't want to win the first HOH, uh, we often look at it as a great HOH to win. You kind of set the tone. You're able to immediately get into a majority. You're usually able to create a majority alliance. And up until this season, it's been like a decade since somebody not in the immediate majority alliance has been able to win the game so like if you're in that first immediate big alliance you're usually winning the game kevin kind of screwed that up but uh but usually that's the case and so usually that first hoh is really good and so he, you know here's here's herman he's winning the first hoh he's created the savage seven uh this big alliance um and it's look and you've also got like a couple of other things going on like the retreat and uh you're getting pulled into the marty thing by week uh two yeah. Um, and it's looking like, OK, this is the typical kind of structure we see in a strategic sort of, um, you know, house of, of Big Brother. Um, and it was looking like you were going to be in a, in a good position from that. Then, you know, then Kyle comes along um, <laughs> and and then Kevin comes along, you know, sort of in the wake of Kyle's chaos. Um, right. And it was like here, like you were trying to like create order in the house, uh, like a nice structure where you're protected. You've got the, the big players, the big competitors all working together. And then you've got Kevin, who's uh, just trying to just cause as much chaos as possible, uh, just destabilize everything. Um, and, uh, and and that's interesting because like your I think your instinct to play the game was a very good one. Um, and we for a long time saw you as like the biggest opposition to what Kevin was doing. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, I appreciate, I appreciate that. Yeah, that I'm, I'm a very logical, you know, decision maker, you know, so right away going in there, I knew I had to optimize the, you know, HOH and I knew that a big alliance was the way to do it. And we didn't necessarily have the numbers going into week two, as far as votes went, but when Marty won HOH, who wasn't in the seven and put up two people that weren't in the seven, Mm -hmm. we had the numbers. And I was like, this couldn't have gone better. Like, you know what I mean? I really thought it, at the very least it was a tie, I think, or whatever, but it was, I think we had the numbers. I was like, this couldn't have gone better. So, and then week three, Kyle's in the seven and he wins. And I'm like, we like, yo, we're good to like six, at least week six, you know? Yep. And then we can, you know, and then it just, it just wasn't that. It just like was three members of the Alliance hit the block and I lost my mind. Literally, literally. Because as a viewer, um, even though it's a very good strategy to have a big majority alliance that kind of runs the table, uh, you kind of root for chaos most of the time because yeah. that's more entertaining. Um, so when Kyle won that HOH, we were all just like, ah, oh, well, there it is. Easy, straightforward week. All Obviously, he's ah! going to put up Jess and Betty. Uh, yeah. Betty will go because that's, uh, you know, it'll be such an easy, we, it'll really solidify this big majority. Uh, yeah, it definitely didn't go that way. <laughs> oh, and that's why that's what frustrated me so much. I think that week was that was the hardest week for me. For I mean, mm-hmm. for sure, um, I really felt good, and I felt like we, you know, everyone was kind of taking their turn at winning power. Like Kyle was in there. We had a good thing with Marty. Um, it just it just felt like, and it would have been bo- it probably would have been boring TV. Like, you know, then the next person, you know, I think if Gino wins that next week butterfly effect obviously but gino's a very logical thinker yep. too and you know would be you know would have rocked up and done the same thing and at that point you know we definitely have a majority i think that builds trust with everybody 
and you know the rest is history maybe then we turn on the on the retreat or you know put someone up from there as a pawn aka like you know jace or steph probably not jace at the time but it might have been steph mm -hmm. as on to, to you know kind of break that up a little bit but yeah there's a million different if if thens or you know what could have been but um it felt it felt really early in week three to destroy like it wasn't like anything bad even happened and, and even with moose like moose had talked about people in the seven but i mean tell me about it you know and then mm. let's discuss it like let's not blow up everything and then have seven people trying to find other connections elsewhere which was what happened well i herman i don't think you understand my degree is not in english it is in sport media Not the sport media. <laughs> Not the sport media. Uh, and and Thank Moose, you. he just gave the. Uh... Oh my gosh, what Moose is doing? This is an award-winning performance. <laughs> you know, you know what's so you know what's so troubling about that? When Moose got called in, basically Kyle throws him under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> Chucks him under this moving bus, right? Moose comes in there, doesn't throw Kyle under the bus. Mm-hmm. And basically saves Kyle in this conversation. Yep. Really saves him. And then he leaves the room and Kyle goes, that was scary. <laughs> he says, what? <laughs> what were you scared of? The truth? <laughs> <laughs> he saved him. He saved the boy. And it just and it just got flipped on him. It was bizarre. It was bizarre. Yeah, it was, it was, it was wild. Uh you're exactly where we were watching it. It was just like what? It's like And then and then <laughs> Yeah, and then and then after Kyle was like, I see, I knew that would when I when I dropped Moose's name, I knew that she would call him up, and then I knew that he would do that. So I was right. like, No, you didn't. <laughs> like some like some puppet master, like bro, you had no idea. You panicked and said a name because <laughs> you got pressed for a name, and you gave Moose's, and you threw him under the bus, and Moose absolutely saved you, mm -hmm. and, and then you threw him under the bus again, and then he hit you with the check. You know, <laughs> it was just beautiful. The check was great. Um, all right. Uh, so I'd love to talk more about week one, though, uh, because we did not have feeds for week one. So we are entirely reliant on the episodes and the episodes showed probably like 2% of the week. So uh, can you just run me through uh, your game in week one, like, you know, winning that HOH, how, what the plan was, everything? Yeah. So go to HOH, absolutely crush the puzzle. I don't think anyone even understood what a puzzle was. And then... Number three is my favorite number. Pick the third door. It's HOH, right? So then we go in. I got my room. Wake up tomorrow, the next day, and it's basically 15 conversations back to back from like at 9 a.m. We don't know time, actually. It doesn't matter. But from whatever time to whatever time we thought it was. Um, and I basically was having very generic conversations. Everyone, as you do week one. Um, and the two that stood out, Melina, was uh, just didn't really give me, didn't give me much. It was like, I don't know how to play the game kind of thing. Um, you know, do you want me to tell you to put up all this stuff? And I was just like, okay, it's weird energy. And then, you know, with Jess, um, yeah, we just, it was tangent city. Right. So like we, we couldn't stay on track if, if there was a railroad track. So all of uh, branches being thrown away left and right. Oh, buddy. I had to dodge all of them. Like I was just <laughs> left, right. Just letting them know, letting them fly by. Gino was catching them <laughs> just back here. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> In the bathroom, he had the, the door open. That's right. Uh, yeah. So anyways, that was, you know, I didn't want to make any, I didn't ruffle, want to ruffle any feathers and I just wanted to do what I thought was best for my game. And I put them up and it was, you know, play the, play the, Gino got spun for the wheel. You know, I really thought, you know, me and Gino had built something like we just got along right away. And you know, that was, he was my horse in the race for sure. Um, didn't work out, just came down and it was, uh, at that point, you know, I was, I didn't know who to put up. I was considering a lot of different options. We didn't know that five people in a row were going to use the POV. Like, has that ever been done? Do you know? No, it's it set some records. Yeah. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. But, uh, so that was the start of the chaos. But yeah, as soon as Jess won, I knew that I had to put someone up that would at least, you know, chill the blowback. And Melina just kind of was, I needed someone to go for my initial, from one of my initial nominees. Cause I just didn't want two of them coming back and being, having a reason every week, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, we're in the backyard, I pull Kevin aside and I sit him down and Kevin's playing a very docile, quiet, like, <laughs> like, like this guy's like in his bed all the time, always walking around aimlessly. So I was like, Kev, like, if you do trust me, he's like, yeah, I'm like, I gotta put you up. 
you 100 have the votes you know i gotta put you up and kev was super receptive like okay like i love it like it's all good i trust you He's like, I, I, I i trust you i just i just i love you i trust you um so yeah kev uh kev goes up and like as soon as i tell him it's like right away we go ceremony and and yeah he went up and ha- had the votes but yeah, i just had to make sure that one of my two nominees went home i really didn't want to to cause any waves at that point and it might have been kind of born hoh but I think it set me up decent to, to kind of get a little further in the game. Oh, no. I mean, I feel like for a long time and perhaps for the entire season, I mean, it, it, like, I'm pretty sure you had the most successful HOA train of the entire season, um, considering the success of all of the rest of the HOA trains, yeah. right? Yeah, that's true. Um, it, was messy. it was a messy, chaotic season. All, sure. I mean, even all the way down to the final three HOH. Uh, <laughs> like, there's literally no... H- maybe uh, maybe you could say the final four HOH went okay. Okay, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but even then, should have taken out a Kevin over Helena, right? I know. Uh, it's just nuts. And, it, you know, it's funny because, like I said, I haven't seen those episodes. Obviously, I know what happened. Um, but I'm just so intrigued. Like, I was watching yesterday. I think I was on week three. And Kevin, you know, having that conversation with Marty, I mean, he had Marty like this the whole mm-hmm. season, it sounds like, but he had Marty outside and was like, and he was getting fired up about Kyle being a 23 year old kid. And, yep. da, da, da. and he really got him. And he even said he would be, he would tell everyone he flipped, right? Just like, just to make Marty feel so secure in flipping his vote, had him, just had him in the palm. And then it was a nine, he knew they had the numbers anyways, mm-hmm. you know, like, and then it was a nine, two and. I just like, I just looked at like, so that's just such like a, a big conversation to have in that moment. Um, and it just causes the ruffles that go down to week four or five. And yeah, it was just, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, it was huge. Uh, I have this, this clip from, from Kevin talking about Marty. Marty is an emotional guy and we've really bonded over being the only two married men in this house. The only issue is that I'm not actually married. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this man is sick. <laughs> oh, we've really bonded over being the two only married people in the house. This man is diabolical. <laughs> yo, this marriage thing is ridiculous. We had no idea. And Jerry, Moose comes in, he goes, yo, he's not married. And we're like, what do you mean? He's like, I just know he's not married. He's like, you know what? Jillian's not even real. And we were like on this thing where Jillian wasn't real. Yeah. Oh, we thought, and then we saw the video with the, or we heard that they had, had seen each other and talked. We're like, that's his sister. Yeah. <laughs> he put us all together for this journey thing. Wow. It's, yeah, because your guard's down. I mean, like for, you know, maybe for older competitors and stuff, like for me, it didn't matter the marriage mm-hmm. thing. Like, you know, but I think for a lot of people, it was like, oh my God, he's so sweet. And, like, you know, it's just like so unintimidating. And, and it just made him, I don't know. It's just, that's a lot. It's genius. <laughs> And then, and then swearing on it later. Um, and then swearing on it. It doesn't even exist. It doesn't matter. He's wearing a rubber band. He didn't even go for the real thing. He didn't even borrow his grandma's. He went for the rubber band. He said he worked with his hands. That's why he needed a rubber band. You type on a computer. How do we not pick up on this? Anyways. Uh, all right. So, so sorry. Back to week one. Um, right. So who, who was the intended target between Jess and Melina, uh, if you had your way? Yes. Okay. Um, super gamer just came off like knew the game you know mm-hmm. and in a house of people who didn't seem like they knew the game especially Kevin the way he was playing and like everyone else really just like not being super fans like just gave off vibes like they knew the game yeah uh, so then um, Kevin goes up I, I'm pretty sure I remember Kevin at one point saying that he felt like um, and he was saying this to Helena um, so it, it might have been manipulation, but he, he, he thought that Helena was another option for somebody to go up on the block. And at that point, he had already had his final two with her, uh, which was one of the reasons why he said to her that he was OK with going up on the block. Was that was that true? No, nah, Helena was Helena really wasn't ever a real option mm-hmm. for me. Um, and I think he used that to try and gain trust in Helena to turn yeah. Helena on me a bit. Um, but no, she was never a real option. Like Helena was from Surrey. You know, we had this thing from BC. We were kind of bonded over that. And that, uh, week one, I was not looking to take a shot at Alina. Like, let's keep it a buck. No one that was the replacement was was the target. Um, Kevin was just literally gave, gave off the most like hum, like hum, like docile kind of like like sad puppy kind of vibe. And I was like, he's not gonna be upset. And he told me, and I told him he was fine with it. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Alina was never an option. Let's make that clear. Okay. Uh... Was there ever any thought to switching the 
switching up the vote, taking out Kevin instead of Molina? You know, people have asked me this, like obviously hindsight, yeah. but um, no. Um, Molina was like, I felt at the time very emotional as well too, with regards to like comps, um, just, you know, after being nominated was like really upset and like, just, you know, just wore her heart on her sleeve. And that was, that was a lot. And I think it rubbed a few of the other people the wrong way too. Mm -hmm. Um, so no, at that point I was like, this, this is going to be something that's looking at me, you know, I don't think I'll be forgiven for this. So I think Molina for sure was the target after that. All right. So, uh, also the formation of the Savage Seven. Um, how did it, how did it happen? Who, how did you choose the members? Like, uh, how did it go down? Yeah. So, at that point, because I hadn't been in question mark room at all, like I went straight to HOH night one. Mm-hmm. I wasn't in like those little conversations and whatever. So it was really felt like I was on the island. Like when people get to know each other. Um, and when I talked to Moose, you know, we had talked, I talked like, I, I like you guys, me, Moose and Josh on the platform on the HOH comp. We're like, yo, we like each other's energy. We should definitely do something together. So when we all sat down, we said we should create an alliance. Um, they felt really good about summer and tea. And I felt really good about Gino and Kyle. So they're like, we got to, and then we didn't want to do the whole like all male thing mm-hmm. and just like have it be like a guy's alliance and summer and tea. They felt really strong about, I wasn't close to summer and tea at that point, like at all. Um, so yeah. And I felt really close to Kyle and, 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 and Gino. So we brought them in, had the conversation. Everyone was down, came up with the hand signal. And by the end of week one, we kind of, you know, we had something that was, you know, it, numbers and everyone trusts each other kyle said he hadn't talked to t in summer very often i was like well let's make that effort you know like let's if y'all want to do this and, and you guys and these are the strongest players in the house we feel like let's make an effort to communicate and and, and do that so i got a lot closer with summer and t and uh and gino got close with you know with summer and a few other people but and moose but um i don't think kyle had put in as much of an effort to do that mm-hmm. yeah it was it was interesting because it didn't seem like there was ever a time when like all seven of you really like came together. So um, hard, man. Yeah. It's so hard. It's too, it's so heat, like getting seven of us in a room. Like the one time we had six of us in a room was in the phone room when we were mm-hmm. all, there's that clip I think of, of summer, like ah, 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 and I'm doing this. And summer's like, what's that secret secretaries? And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> are you even, are we doing this or, but um, it was impossible because it was so heat. You get seven people in a room and, and when we were really, um, like trying to get together to have these conversations, like we created basically at the end of my HOH and by week two, Marty was an HOH. There's like, there is not even like a spot. You can't grab anybody. You don't want people to think you're working together. So yeah, we would, you know, we'd get in groups of four or three or six communicate and then kind of relay it to each other. Yeah, I, I've 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 talked about this before, but I feel like the Big Brother Canada house layout is less conducive to like big alliances, especially meeting. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, it just like it's there's more rooms, but they're like they're smaller rooms, I, I think. And it's just like it's just I don't know. Well, it's like super open. It's that super open like center area. Mm. And then the rooms are at the top mm-hmm. right? where like you can the whole house can see when you exit and enter. Mm-hmm. Right. And in, in the American one, I think the HOH one's upstairs. Yeah. Right? Everyone else is downstairs. Yeah. Usually the HOH is the only room upstairs in the U.S. And right. there's a camera that you can you can look at the camera to see who's coming right. uh, when you're yeah. when you're in the HOH room. So uh, I remember that camera. And there's mm-hmm. like I feel like there was like a room where there was like a uh, kind of like a, a bed, like a day bed, a big day bed or something like that. And you could just like kind of it's like a kind of smaller closed off room. Yeah. I don't know. There's, it, it was, it was really tough. And you're trying to like, you're trying to give everyone hints and winks. And I think if we could have all gotten the same room, it would have been great. But I was basically relaying a lot of the information between, you know, mini groups. Yeah. Uh, so obviously Marty's HOH, uh, goes fine. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much what, what you need it to be. Um, yeah. Then, then, as we talk about uh, Kyle, Kyle wins HOH, and uh, and this is around when we get my favorite sound clip of yours. Send help, somebody! <laughs> Send help, somebody! <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was chaos. I was I didn't know where I where I was, why it was happening, 
and you and the problem is too you feel really muzzled mm-hmm. right like i i was talking i was having a lot of good conversations and it's like you just feel so muzzled because you could say the wrong thing and the, the man was very i mean you felt you really had to tippy toe around him right every time you got called into hoh it was a new plan and i'm not even playing with you Taren. it was a new plan every time like what did you hear this time like who cooked your eggs wrong like why are you upset yeah and it was so the, the tippy toe the muzzling i just felt like i couldn't i couldn't be as expressive so it was just like a ball that's why i blacked out after the week like i was like talking to gino and he's like do you want me to talk i'm just gonna talk to g right now because i was gonna you know i lost my mind so i mean he and- he opened it the very first conversation he had with you after winning hoh he was like uh do do you think I was in fact born yesterday? <laughs> yes. Did you see that? Yeah. Man, like what? It was, was so much. He's like, do you think I was born yesterday? Do you think I'm fucking dumb? Yeah. Like I was like, what? And then he's like, just doing the most, right? And he's like, he's like, I know what you did. Your name's Herman. I know what whatever your last name is. First of all, for me, I'm like, what? Like you don't have to bring up the last name. And then. And I was like, are you, are you fucking joking? I thought like, I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I was like, are you fucking joking? He's like, he's like, yeah. I'm like, oh. you think that's funny, bud? You think you're, you think we're having a good time here? Like after that, I think that just set the tone for the week. <laughs> oh, it really did. Uh, <laughs> this is a good example. Every red blooded human should be uh, nervous in this house with me in the HOH room. Yeah. Yeah. Stop with that. Never a truer statement. Um, so, uh, yeah, and I remember, I remember that first conversation. It it was kind of tense. It was kind of like, um, like you guys kept saying, like, yeah, we definitely want to work together and we love each other. But there was like this definite sort of under undercurrent of like, this yeah. is this is weird. This is well, the problem was too like when you're in a group of people in an alliance, that group like your job in that alliance is to make everyone feel secure. Like you want to you want everyone to like work with you together to trust each other. That was not his intention that week. His intention that week was wanted to make everyone feel uncomfortable, even members of his alliance. And mm-hmm. it was he was successful. I was extremely uncomfortable. I'm like, what? Why are you questioning me? Like, I'm like, we're not playing together. Like, how are you pressing me for information? There's a way to ask for information, and there's a way to be like, mm, I don't know if I if you're saying the right thing, or you know, and you just leave the conversation like worse than when you when you walked in. It didn't feel like we were working together, and that's that's what kind of set it up. Yeah. And then, yeah, he, he's got uh, about 15 different plans. Um, you know, yeah. luckily you, you did a good enough job to avoid. You were I, I don't know. You were mentioned um, as a target. So uh, when. OK, so his initial plan is uh, Steph. Yeah. And then um, it goes. He tells Steph and then brings Moose up and is, wow, that's award winning award winning performance. Um, and, and then he starts thinking about Moose, but then, uh, it also, you get, your name gets brought up, gets brought up. Um, and, uh, and the, the idea is, okay, maybe, maybe a backdoor of Herman or Moose. Um, and, uh, and then like you, you did just a good enough job of tiptoeing and like being like, yeah, I'm totally great idea at Kyle, uh, that, uh, that it, that it fully became Moose. Um, and then, and then it was so wild that like the, the original idea was, okay, so we're going to backdoor Moose. It's going to be Steph and Betty, and then we're going to backdoor Moose. Um, and then it was like, well, no, let's not burn the bridge with Steph. If we're just going to, uh, if we're just going to target Moose anyway, then we don't even need to put Steph on the block. We'll put Betty and Moose on the block. Um, and, and it was like, oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. If I put Moose on the block, I need Steph to compete with him in the veto. So I'm going to put Steph and Moose on the block. Um, and it was like, you just, you just completely turned, just backdoor him at that point. Yeah. Like it's just, it was too much. It, and that is like the way you're describing it. That was, those were, that was every conversation. Like it would just change. And, and you know, eventually at some point I was just like, buddy, no problem. And I was mad when I heard that Moose had said my name, mm-hmm. you know, I, I genuinely was like Matt. I was like, yo, I didn't, I've never even said this guy's name out of my mouth once. So that was legit. But you know, after that, I was like, any plan he came up with, I'm like, absolutely. And that's why I was trying to flip the votes to save, to save Josh. And I told everyone, I was like, if this gets out, I'm going to tell everyone you're a liar and I will vote with 
Kyle Sutton. Like, mm-hmm. so that was that was kind of my insurance policy in my game. Yeah. So, uh, so this is really uh, a pivotal point in the game for you. Obviously, your your structure is just crumbling to the ground. Uh, Kyle's just burning everything in sight. Um, and in addition, there there are some attempts to recover. There's the Rebel Rejects Alliance that uh, kind of comes into play. The uh, the True Few uh, yeah. thing that happens as well. Uh, a couple of attempts here, um, but there's an interesting thing that happens. So the house is turning on Kyle. Um, most of the house agrees that Josh should stay, Steph should go. Um, but there's not a lot of trust on, on for this, right? Like. Nobody wants to be the person who gets exposed as being anti Kyle because Mad King Kyle will like, you know, right. smash the hammer down. Right. Uh, and so um, in particular, there are a lot of people who are concerned about your vote because they see that you're still in good with the guys and you are playing up that you're good with the guys. But in, in reality, you're like, send help somebody. So uh, <laughs> but they're but they don't you're doing such a good job that they don't know for sure that you're actually with them or if you're just playing them or if you're playing the guys. Right. And you feel the same way, I think, about uh, Helena and, and Kevin at this yes. point because they are also playing both sides. Um, and so there's this weird kind of like, I don't know if we can, even though we're we're actually both on the same page, we don't actually trust that, that the other one's not going to run to Kyle. Yes, exactly. There was, there was a fear that any information that you gave would get back. And that's like, even with this rebel rejects thing, everyone's telling me like, you know, one of my mistakes was saying no to that Alliance, but you know, I'm talking with Kyle and he 150,000% thinks he has Kevin mm-hmm. and I'm in rooms where Kevin's saying he's hundred percent with them. So Summer's telling me that she's trying to work with, with Kev. I'm like, don't trust this man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in these rooms. Like he's saying these things. And Summer's like, trust me, we have Kevin. And I'm like, I don't so, you know, I'm t- begging and pleading with Summer not to trust Kevin. She realized I don't want to do it. She realized she's kind of exposed her position. So then she gives me the pat on the back. Like, thanks so much for letting me know about Kevin. Well, she had, she's working with him anyways. <laughs> well, it's because it's, it's, Kevin is doing the exact same thing to you. He's telling Summer, you can't, you can't trust Hermont. Uh, he's not, he's not with us. Um, and, and Kevin also has the advantage of like when Kyle brings every, all the bros up, to have like the bro meeting and Kevin's not invited. Kevin's like, oh, I'm not a bro. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not with them. Um, so, uh, so Kevin does propose the the comedians uh, to you, um, and this is definitely a moment where it's like he's. I think he sees that like, okay, this I, I need to either, you know, rope this guy in, or he needs to be my target. And, yeah. um, and so he, he makes this proposal and you, we, you, you kind of like, you, you kind of come with, so, so, so you're with, you're with the bros, you're with the guys like, oh yeah, 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 we're both with the guys and neither of you are actually with the guys, but you're saying right. you're with the guys. And so it's like, it doesn't really land. And from that moment forward, Kevin was like really determined, like, okay, this guy's is dangerous for my game. I, I felt, yeah. And I felt the same way. I thought it was it seemed like just convenient. Like the reason we were, he wanted to do this com- comedians Alliance mm-hmm. it didn't feel authentic. It felt like circumstantial because we were with the boys and they, they were telling me you have to work with Kevin. So then Kevin proposes this thing. I'm like, this is a setup. Don't love it. And so I kind of, I kind of fluff him off and I'm like, I'm going after Kevin and Helena. Mm-hmm. I just, I can't, I can't figure him out. I'm not doing it. And I felt like Helena was running the middle. So that wasn't good for my game. You know, at least if you're shooting for me, I know you're shooting for me. You know, there's val- there's there's value in that, you know, but yeah. yeah, there's the middle stuff I didn't love. I mean, it was good instincts to not to not trust him. Uh just kind of put you in a in a tough yeah. spot. Um so uh so the the blind side goes through. Um there's a very I don't know if you've seen this yet, but there's a very funny moment where uh Jace and Gino both think that the each other flipped. Um, and Jace thinks that Kyle was in on it the whole time and he's trying to tell her I wasn't yeah. in on it and she tells him You really suck at lying. <laughs> I seen that last night actually. Yeah. That's, That's so funny. Yeah, that was a good episode, like, right? Do you know what's going do you even know what's going on? It's like no. Yeah. Do you know where you are right now? Do you know where you are right now? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that was a lot. That was so are you maybe you seen it, maybe you didn't, but 
Jace had stormed off to, so I basically talked to Gino. You guys see that conversation in the show mm -hmm. and Jace had stormed off to her room and I saw her like leave the bathroom and was upset. So I guess she had just talked to Kyle in that bathroom. I went upstairs, talked to Jace and she's like, what are you doing up here? Like just super mad. I'm like, Whoa, Hey, easy heal. You know what I mean? And she was like, did your boy send you up here? Like, why the fuck would you guys do that? Da, da, da. She was really upset. And I'm like, yo, listen, listen, I flipped. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, it wasn't like, I, I just couldn't do it. Kyle messed up my game. I'm explaining this to her. And at that point, I knew that she had, she was one of the votes the other way. So when I talked to Gino in Expedia right after, um, I think there's a bit of that on the show. But yep. I, talked to, I talked to him after and I was like, Jace, I knew Jace had voted the other way. And he told me that he voted the other way. I'm like, she's mad at you because you guys both think each other flipped but you guys are both on the same side and then he's like then he just like then he had to process that marty flipped yeah and it was like that was a lot for him you know so but i was the first one to tell him that jace you know jason you know had actually voted the same way as him yeah and i think that was huge and, and i i think this was like um this was some of your your best work in terms of like uh like gino winning this not great because yeah. you were you are one of the people that was really supposed to be with them and like would have should have at least given them a heads up. Um, and uh, and you have players like Kevin who are very much looking to be like uh, it's Herman's fault. In fact, Helena is go is out there saying Herman is the one that flipped my vote at the last second. Um, and so uh, like they're trying to pin this on you and it could have it could have been pinned on you, except you put in some really good work here um, just before and immediately following this blind side. Uh, and it, it is this relationship with Gino that you you you're able to like maintain and, and you almost like you almost have it with Gino and Jace many times throughout the season. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, it's always Kevin and Alina trying to chop it away. I know, right? That's why, like, I, I was, you know, on Twitter and stuff, I see everyone being like, you know, the alliance that should have been and stuff like that. You know, I really was trying to work with them and let them know that they they were an asset to my game. Before people were saying they were an asset, I was saying they were an asset. I'm like, that's two votes. I get it. And eventually I was going to have to come for them for sure. But everyone else was saying they were a threat, you know? And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, everyone thinks they're an asset. Everyone wants to work with the showmats now. And I'm like, and they're like, sorry, come on, man. We made this deal with them. I'm like, I've been saying this. <laughs> They just, they took my lines. Like me and Betty are on the block. I'm telling everyone I'm going to be a pawn. I'm going after Marty. I've named my three targets, which guarantees everyone top six with me. Like that's a massive guarantee. Like no one else is guaranteeing you safety for the next three weeks or three evictions. And then Betty's saying she's going to go on the pawn. I'm like, everyone's using my pitch. And then, just, like, <laughs> and then everyone's believing them instead of me. But anyways. Yeah. Well, uh, you do well here. I actually, it's funny because obviously like Kyle was uh, a major sort of annoyance to your game. Um, but uh, when Gino decides to take out Kyle, I actually felt like overall this was kind of a net negative for you because Kyle was such a big distraction at the time. Um, right. But, uh, you know, it's you never really know. And it's not like uh, you had control over this one. Um, but, uh, but Kyle ends up leaving, which I'm sure was in some way a, a, a relief very 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 much so yeah I, and i honestly didn't know like at this point means you know still we we're building but mm -hmm. the trust wasn't 100 there i wasn't in every conversation it was just really jace and and kyle that were having these like more gamey conversations with them um but it was there was such a fire there was such a burn in my in my spirit there was no one else that could have left other than kyle and they, Summer had put in some work and she would come back every night to the room and tell me like, oh, I think Kyle's an option. I'm like, you're bugging. That's yeah. like his number one. You're out to lunch. And I'm on the couch and Kyle looks over at me. He's like, do you know who's going up? And I'm like, uh, no. And he like whispers something. I don't catch it. You know, then it's, then it's like, you know, then we're on. Right. And Kyle goes up. And I'm like, that was genuine. I had no idea, but I think he was trying to tell me on the couch. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, yeah, that was shocking for me. But as soon as he went up, I think it was the first unanimous vote of the season. And uh, it was also the same week that the other Calmore went home, I think. So, <laughs> yes, it's kind of funny. <laughs> um, one of the other unanimous votes. And the landslide unanimous vote. Unanimous vote. Uh, oh, for I like that. <laughs> Never heard that. That's cool. Um, so, uh, so then Jess wins the next HOH, 
and uh, and this is when things really start to get uh, get worrisome for you because this is when Kevin really starts to wield some power in the game, uh, really uh, really controlling Jess's HOH, and the target is aimed at the at the comedian here, um, and. Um, it's it's not looking super great, uh, but you do manage to win uh, that veto. Yeah, um, I knew I was going up. It just you know watching that H O H your heart just sinks when when Jess wins. You're like, hey, I'm going up. And I think that was was that the Doors, Legend of the Doors. I think I yeah, yeah that yeah that's the one you forgot to go to one of the doors. I missed Spicy's door. I had six of the seven right. Like I just and Spicy's was the only one I got wrong. So that was frustrating and then yeah Jess winning so yeah I go up and then I win POV you know I danced on the block I danced off the block I just wanted I wanted Jess to understand that I wanted everyone to understand if you come for me that you know I mean maybe maybe too much so there's too much beast terms there but um they obviously didn't give me an opportunity to play the next week so I don't know if it was too much but I as far as like kind of let everyone know how beast and how mad I wanted to play and all that stuff Cause I hadn't been picked. I'd never been spun for a veto. I'd never been a house guest choice for a veto. I'd been begging for it week four, begging. They don't show it, but I was begging. I was in DR losing it. And, um, and yeah, finally week five, I'm like, shit, if I'm on the block and this is only I get to play veto, then I love it. Right. That's, mm-hmm. that's exactly what I wanted. So it worked out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's big because, uh, I'm not, you know, you, you managed to survive obviously. Um, but then, uh, Tanisha goes up on the block and this is the, the tricky part. I, I, again, it's another key moment for, for Kevin's game where he is really going to try and orchestrate this split vote, uh, five to four. And, and part of the reason why like the split vote, um, is important is because, um, from my perspective, at least, uh, you would have been fine, uh, to go with the majority. Um, you, you, you obviously yeah. end up campaigning for Tanisha to stay, but before that you were trying to figure out like, where are the votes? Because I don't want to be on the wrong side of them. And right. then you, there's this, there's this like interesting conversation with Kevin where you're trying to feel him out about like where his vote is. And he's doing his best to be like, I don't know, like, uh, probably like, he's like, please don't, please don't suss out that the vote is this way. I want you to be on the wrong side of it. Um, yeah. And so, uh, so walk me through like uh, the your your process with the the vote, and then um, sort of your reaction uh, after. Yeah, so you know, T for my game was good at the time. She, had, I knew a hundred percent loyalty to me. Moose had given me a little bit of a waiver. I knew that Moose that I just felt like he had to go. So I'm trying to feel the votes, trying to see what's going on talking to kevin kevin wins pov first of all the time it actually that was a different week sorry so sorry but um yeah i was just trying to feel the votes and it just became a, like i remember having a conversation with josh and helena and we're talking through all this stuff and i just come to this like epiphany like i just finally decided i was like t has to stay you know and that was what i you know in my heart wanted to do and i really thought helena me just needed to hear that people wanted to keep t and we had four I knew Helena was a swing. I felt like Helena was the swing in week three, even though it was a nine to two. My headset was that Helena was playing the middle that week. And then I felt like she was playing the middle again this week. And it just made me sick. I was like, I'm so sick of groveling for these votes, you know? So I was like, whatever happens, happens. If Helena decides to switch last minute, then because she was selling tea up until last minute that she was going to vote to keep tea. Mm-hmm. Right. And then it was just like a last second thing that you know right before the vote she told her and at that point i could have gone six three but i thought i would have lost favor with um summer you know with josh and betty and i just didn't want to leave them high and dry because if one of them won then i'm you know I, i'm an outcast in that scenario so i thought i would just die on that hill yeah uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's again. It's um, like Kevin pleading with like, don't you can't tell him yet. You can't tell him yet, uh, and uh, just trying to keep those lines separate so that because uh, again, like you, your relationship with Gino and 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 Jace is like, uh, and it, it, even though you're on separate sides of the vote heading into the following week it starts to it's like okay we're maybe there again like we can get back to there um but uh but if you maybe if you'd had like those few days before that blindside you know working together again it might have been harder to break right so um it's a it's a tough one um but you do okay here in the uh in the double eviction 
um, the safety chain. Moose yeah. is gonna win win the bowling or whatever it was. Yeah, uh, the warped bowling, I think it was called. Yeah. But yeah, he wins, and there was a lot. I mean, in my eyes, that went perfectly. Like mm-hmm. there was the selection went perfect. That was one of the fir- only times like me Moose like that side of the house had power you know besides my hoh so you know i think we made sure everyone was safe and then whatever happened happened i mean summer picking kevin was like okay how close are you guys everyone kind of had to show their game which is nuts like josh is my final two i picked josh you know Mm -hmm. then josh picks betty and you're like well how close are him and betty right then you know the summer the summer kevin thing was big it was like a big epiphany and then kevin picked marty uh, marty yeah because he knew marty would pick helena right which which i didn't know i'm thinking marty's picking gino yeah and it's just like how many times how many times is he gonna slap this guy around like and i'm going to gino like man it's it's written it's right here i would never betray him a third time never ever than the gummy bear and you're like buddy this is like, this is a sickness. This is a sickness. I don't know what's going on. Uh, well, one thing that really also works out in your favor here is that it's Jess and Gino on the block. And uh, there's an attempted uh, flip here um, yeah. that happens. Um, I, I assume you haven't seen this episode yet. It's it's pretty wild to watch it. Um, uh, but basically, the numbers are there. Uh, Kevin is the person doing the thumbs up, uh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man no wonder everyone loves this guy this guy's out of control <laughs> out of control okay um so uh they've they're they've got the numbers um but betty sees marty on the other couch uh looking like he's gonna die um and so she thinks he's not gonna go through with it so she backs out lets kevin and uh gino uh, or sorry kevin and uh josh now not, we're not going to go through right it anymore. On the, on the couches. So Helena and, and Marty are on the other the other couch on the other side. And, right beside me. Marty's here. Yep. And Marty's like, oh, my God. I don't know. Uh, and so Betty sees him freaking out. She's like, we can't. We're not, we're not going to go through with it. So those three know to stop voting. Helena and Marty still think the plan is on. They end up voting for Gino. Um, if Betty doesn't call it off, Gino's gone. Come on. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's nuts! That changes the whole course of the game. Yeah, uh, and 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 it's huge because now Marty's pissed at Betty and Josh because uh, and and you know uh, Kevin and Helena are able to convince him. Oh, it was all Betty and all Betty and Josh. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely and more Betty than Josh because we're working with Josh. Um, and so poor Betty gets completely thrown into the bus. Um, but uh, but it does help because the target is genuinely on uh, on Betty. Uh, and and Josh uh, here when Marty ends up winning the following HOH because he feels like he was trapped. He feels like he was tricked. Um, right. And so uh, even though, you know, the ideal target for Kevin at that point would have again been you, uh, he can't get it onto you because Marty's preoccupied with Josh and Betty. Right. Right. Yeah, that's it. As soon and my blessing, the blessing for me was how much I didn't like Jess. And everyone knew I couldn't have been, and I wasn't in that room, Mm -hmm. you know? So like, and then I also, you know, again, like when I told Gino about Jace's vote and all stuff, I'm in there telling him, I know it's Marty. Marty's the worst liar. It's Marty. I can see it on his face. Gino just doesn't want to buy it. Right. And I'm pinning him with it. It's Marty. It's Marty and Kevin. It's Marty and Kevin. And then I'm like, no, it's Helena. He just saved her in the chain of safety. She owes him her life. She's doing whatever Marty says. They're on the couch together. It's 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 Helena and, and Marty. So like, you know, I'm really trying to make sure Gino knows like it, it obviously it wasn't because they're trying to convince Kevin's in the other room, like, what if what if it's Hermon or something? Is what I'm hearing, right? Like <laughs> they're, they're picking me. I'm like, don't fall for it. I'm like, you're smarter than that. I'm not even gonna try and, you know, convince you. Otherwise, there's no need to. Y'all heard me yell from the diary room. Like mm-hmm. that thing is soundproof. I screamed at the top of my lungs. Like, what do you want me to do? It's like but yeah, no, it, uh, it it did work out in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And but so you had been trying to put something together with Gino and Jace the, the prior the previous week, um, again, kind of held back by this, you know, blindside situation. Um, but this kind of creates an opportunity 
And uh, and man, if, if Gino was like a little bit more of like a, an active uh, like uh, player, um, no. you might have been able to survive this week. Uh, but because um, he did feel like, you know, he did feel good about you uh, at this point. He he, he him and, and Jace, they kind of felt like, yeah, we're, we've got we've got um, we've got Herman. Uh, and. It is the target is firmly on bed and, and Marty is in the in the HOH room talking to the cameras like there is no way I'm targeting her mom this week. It's it's Betty has to go. Betty's going to go. He's like so adamant about it. Um, and it's you know, Kevin is just just keeps working and working and working on him. Um, and, and then he, he gets to a point where he's when, once Kevin wins the veto um, and man, <laughs> this is the nominees. Uh <laughs> I'm I'm in that house. If this guy knows how to spell nominees, yeah. Like I'm in that house. I don't leave. And uh, I'm in I'm I'm in there. Like I'm yelling. I'm like it's I before E except after C. Like I just you know. But Gino speaks three languages, man. Like the guy's super smart. It's like it was hard to give him a hard time. But I was like, mm -hmm. bro, you talk to me, you know. And, and I think if, if he was talking to Marty. You know, I know Marty was kind of testing them to test mine and Gino's relationship, but I think if Gino's like, listen, man, I don't think it's there. It's not the time. You made the one week deal with Herman. Why, why blow that up? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? These other people actually turned on you. I think Herman's better for our game and we can do something with them. If Gino just, just says that, you know, I think there's, there's a chance, but I think he was in full self-preservation mode for some reason. And, uh, Anyways, I mean, that was that's kind of the story of Gino's game, right? Even when, you know, when Marty was HOH the first time and he wanted to nominate Jace, uh, he was just like, sure. Uh, and then when Marty was like, do you want to put a gummy bear in? He was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. He just like, yeah, it was like this whole thing where, you know, he's very soft spoken kind of guy or whatever. But like, I mean, he's very smart, makes good decisions. But when it was like opinionated and stuff and they were asking, I mean, it, it, you know, there's a lot of times where Gino was like, if you think that's the right movement, I'll support you and whatever, where sometimes you want, like if you put a soldier in battle for you and you're working with people, you want them to, that's why I was even like, I, I bug Summer about it all the time. But I was like, listen, if we're in an alliance, there's six of us, only five people play. If one of us wins HOH, there's four people playing because you throw comps or you don't want to play, you take half cards or you, you, you stare at Jed's door for two, two <laughs> minutes. It's like, what, at, at what point is this a mutually beneficial relationship? Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, summer throwing comps was definitely, uh, a, a big thing, um, for, for, and, and it, you know, definitely wasn't great, uh, because you really needed to win some of those comps. You, you understood that like winning comps was important. Uh, you tried to impress that upon summer. Uh, you the relationship was a little rocky, uh, there for a little while because you were pretty frustrated with, uh, with the comp throwing. Um, yeah. And and I again I I feel like I feel like you did uh, as as much as you could in terms of like look if you're if they're not going to win comps then I need to shift to the people who are um, because I need to to get there um, yeah. but uh, didn't didn't quite get there. No, I just feel like Kevin had my number and it was uh, and he was you know and the thing is too if Marty Marty was winning comps man Marty was winning HOHs and you know Kevin was you know the mastermind behind Marty so. You know, Marty got all the blood on his hands. Kevin sat pretty. I didn't, you never really saw how close that relationship was. He kind of did, but kind of didn't. You know what's funny? When I was, so Marty told me I was safe, right? Mm -hmm. That week. Um, so I had this plan. He had a couple beers in the fridge downstairs. And I was like, I don't know, man. This guy's irritating me. I don't know. I don't know. I got to do something. So my plan was to wake up in the middle of the night and just like pop the beers, dump them out and then put him on the circle in the, in the living room and just have everyone wake up to it. There's no alarm clocks, obviously, in Big Brother. <laughs> you just try and figure it out and wake up. I sleep very well. I get eight hours, like REM sleep. And every, you know, it's just like, so I, I wake up to the good morning and I'm like, how do I immediately get downstairs, you know? And by the time you get downstairs, because um, I just wanted to cause a ruckus, mm -hmm. right? I wanted to, you know, stir the pot. I wanted to do all that. So anyways, I woke up, Marty's downstairs making coffee. I don't get a chance to do it. And then I go up. I was like, you, I wish I did it. You wanted to, uh... I'm not called stir the pot poppy for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wanted to stir the pot. I just, I wanted, and I, talk, I talked to Marty about this in, in, in jury. And he's like, oh man, if you would have done that, like, you know, he would have been on a crusade. He loves his beer, right? Yeah. You know, he'd have been on a crusade to find out who it was. So maybe that would help, but... 
Yes. Um, so you end up on the block and uh, it, this season, it, it's just it really is blow after blow. It was exciting all the way through. Even after you go up on the block, you manage to flip the votes um, uh, for for a night, at least. Uh, you have Summer flipped. You have uh, Gino and Jace flipped. And uh, and just like that, you you would stay over Betty. Um, it's not until the following morning that sort of like um, the strike back happens uh, where Kevin and Betty and Josh start really uh, going hard to campaign to summer and uh, and Gino and Jace. But uh, but you almost had it there for a second. I thought I was doing a good job selling. I, I got good reactions. I could you know, I was reading it and I, I just thought I was making valid points and you know, I can win comps. I was going to name my targets. I was going to be a shield for the majority of them. I think it would have been a good shield for Gino uh, and Jace. It just, it seemed like a no brainer. I was like over explaining again and again. And I was like, summer Betty, you're a bigger target than Betty is at this point in the game. I don't understand how, like I still, I actually still don't understand. I'm still I'm getting agitated. It doesn't make any sense at the time. It made no sense. You know, and I was like, like, that's that logical side of me where I was like, listen, like, I'm a, I'm, I'm going to be one of the biggest targets in this house next to Marty. I don't understand why you guys won't keep me. So, yeah, but I don't, it's yeah. so, uh, so part of it with Gino and Jace is that um, ultimately Betty and Josh are going to make, uh, and I'm sure you've, maybe you've heard about this. They made a final four with, with Gino and Jace. Um, and, uh, and so that's happening. And, you know, obviously uh, there's also, so you had a final two with Josh. Yeah. Uh, and um, Kevin kind of set you up with Josh where you had a conversation with Kevin about the veto because you didn't think it was going to be used and you didn't really want it to be used. Um, right. And so uh, Kevin, knowing that you had a final two with Josh because Josh told him about it uh, because this is what Josh does. So I'm spilling the tea to Kevin. Um, so <laughs> oh. Kevin told Josh, Herman doesn't want the veto to be used. He's trying to get me to not use the veto to save you. Um, and then you, you know, you have a conversation with Josh afterward where you're like, oh, I don't think Kevin's going to use the veto. And Josh is like, you little. Um, yeah. yeah. And he goes to Kevin afterward. He's like, Kevin, I just, you're always right. I can't trust Herman. Um, <laughs> no way. That's so sick. I, cause I'm asking, I'm telling him like, man, I really don't think I'm just trying to give him intel. Like I really don't think he's going to use the veto because Marty's saying, it would be, you know, he'd be going against what Marty's wishes. And like, why would he go against Marty's wishes? They're so close. I was trying to give him intel, right? I wasn't trying to mm -hmm. persuade him or anything. Like that. But yeah, that's that's funny. That's funny. Because I, I think I was the first person. And this is Kevin. This is the genius of Kevin. I go to talk to Kevin. He wins POV. I think I'm one of the first people to go talk to him. And I start having like a game conversation. I'm like, this is the first time someone's won the POV off the block. It, it changes the game. You know, there's a lot more moving parts here. And Kevin's like, oh, wow. He's like, yeah. Maybe, I don't know, should I be having conversations with people? Like, I don't know. I've never, you know, and I'm like, well, yeah, Kev, like, if you want, I don't know, you don't have to, but like, I decided to come talk to you, buddy. You just want a thing. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe I'll go start having some conversation, gets up and just peels, right? And like, you're like, man, this guy, like, does he know anything? Or <laughs> he just plays on that. And I was like, oh, man. Uh, it's all it's too like I remember like you were having a conversation with Summer after he used it and Summer was like yeah I convinced him to use it um, you know I, I got him to do it and it was like oh. I'm like I'm, and I'm sitting there too I'm like Summer picks him for POV mm -hmm. or for, uh, in that comp for the teeter or doesn't pick him for the teeter totter right, yeah. and I'm like Kevin can't stand on still ground and balance himself like how how could you not pick him for the teeter totter I'm losing it on Summer like she sits down on the bench I'm like why Kevin <laughs> You know, she's like, she's like, I wanted to beat a big competitor. Or she's like, or oh, I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later, right? And then it's this whole thing. So now I'm looking at, like, she picked him in the chain of safety. She picked him in this. Didn't pick him in this thing. You know, everything goes fucking wrong. Gino crushes that 5D puzzle and, like, can't spell nominize. And it's just like, yeah, it was just it was just too much. At that point, I'm like, what is really good? Summer's telling me, I want to come and have this moment, da 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 this, that, and the third. I'm like, why? You know? But obviously, they're way closer than I thought. Yeah. So, uh, at that, at that point, uh, you're voted out. Um, you didn't think you were going to be on the jury. I asked you this question when, when in my exit interview, because yeah. you, you looked crestfallen <laughs> when, when the jury was announced when it was like, so we're actually starting the jury. You were like, Oh really? Like, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I started to like disassociate from the game, like mentally, like mm -hmm. you know, we were on that couch for a long time. And, and, uh, 
you know, I'm thinking of like the first meal, the flight, right. you know, what things we're going to, you know, what, what my action plan is going back home. Like, you know, we had a lot of time to think. So yeah, it was a lot. And the jury house is now open and I'm start looking at everyone like, ah, and it's funny too, because with the jury management thing, you know, I think obviously it becomes more of a thing the week following because mm-hmm. everyone understands when someone leaves, you got to manage that, but it wasn't for mine. So, you know, Josh didn't even give me a conversation before I left. Um, and I was supposed to be found to, I approached him twice and he said he would hundred percent talk to me. Didn't even give me a conversation. So I'm, I'm salty. Kevin, we're on opposite sides of the fence. Kevin put, we're in the pantry. He pulls me in. He goes, I just want to let you know, man, I know we weren't on the same side of the, the game. He's like, you're world-class funny. He's like, you're one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. He's like, I studied this for a living. And he's like, you're just incredible. He's like, and I'm, he's like, I'm a Herman fan. He's like, I told you this week too. He's like, I'd always be a Herman fan. And like, just hits you with that. Right. And you're like, oh man, it's good guy. You're like, just good guy. <laughs> so then you see him in final two and you're like, how can I, he never did me dirty. You know, he never did me dirty. Yeah. It, it, and it, it, it's, it's so funny too, because we, at this point in the game, we were like, okay, Kevin's doing a, a really great job, but is the jury ever going to see what, he, cause nobody in the game sees it. So are they ever going to see what he's what he's done? And he doesn't even know to start telling people like in his goodbye messages. But he ends up actually, even though he didn't think you were on the jury necessarily, he ends up leaving a goodbye message where he is like, look, I, I had to do this. Um, yeah. And so but when I talked to you, it's, it seemed like it still hadn't quite set in. You were you were still pretty low on Kevin as a, as a player overall. Yeah, I didn't think I thought he was over. I think he was overplaying or, or overstating his impact mm-hmm. on that. Week. I was like, there's no way you corrupted Marty in that way. <laughs> you know, there's no way I'm like, you're just blowing smoke. I wanted this for a while. I finally got it done. I'm like, what? Like, I, there's no way. Right. So yeah. And then, you know, Kevin, uh, sorry, Helena and Marty coming into the, the jury, they start giving you the tea and you're like, Holy smokes. Like ghosties, you know, Marty's telling you he's doing all this stuff. He's the reason he was the one behind me going up all this. And you're like, yo, I underestimate this man's game you know, for sure. So, yeah. Uh, so you head to the jury. Um, just walk me through the, the process. Like a, a each person comes in, what, what kind of information are they bringing? What, when Moose gets there, what is he saying? Yeah. Moose comes in and reveals to me that by the grace of God, somehow Marty doesn't touch the block. Helena wins with the odds stacked against her for one. I, I just like, mind blown and I'm, and it was just like and i told you so and it was a should have kept her mom moment you know mm-hmm. what i mean like, <laughs> i saw that trending like it just was and that was going to be you know i really feel like i have a good chance of playing in in, in povs and stuff like that. just i don't know it's one in five it's a three usually three parters or like something like that and they're just really cool comps but tells me that mind blown right i'm like marty's gonna win the game find out then gino comes in tells me marty was hoh i'm like this guy this guy's a legend, you know? And then he hits me with the gummy bear thing. <laughs> and I almost shit myself. Like, I was like, Gino, why didn't you, why didn't you just eat the gummy bear? Why don't you tell him to pound sand and eat the gummy bear? Like there's, I was like, how many, how many times? And so then he tells me that he gets the red one. <laughs> they take this picture and I, <laughs> And then I was like, no, not the picture. I was like, it's too much for me. You can't do the picture. So then there's that summer and Marty come in. Marty starts to tell me a lot about, and so does summer about Kevin's game, you know, and as more and more people come in, it's just like pff, a big dump. Helena comes in, gives me a, me and Helena actually compared a lot of notes on Josh's game. Mm-hmm. So, which helped build even more resentment towards Josh, right? Because I didn't realize how close they were and how close I wasn't, you know, with Helena and then and how close I wasn't with Josh. Um, so by the time we get to finale, you want to talk about a bitter jury. I, in my exit interviews, I was like, I'm not bitter. I'm not, I'm not going to be bitter. It'll be a logical decision. Then everyone's telling me all the tea. And I'm like, <laughs> holy smokes. I missed the boat on this thing. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. So, so, uh, so yeah, tell me more about the, the Josh stuff because... Um, because this is something that happens, right? Like I, I've I've been doing these, you know, interviews with the jury for a long time, and usually what happens is, uh, and this is what happened last season and season nine, people coming out of the game were like, nah, not Ty. I don't like I I don't like what Ty did. But then by the time the vote comes around, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll give it to Ty. Um, and so we thought maybe that's what will happen with Josh, especially if he starts winning all these competitions. Um, right. Why do you think it it apart from you know just 
the Kevin factor. Uh, what was it about Josh's uh, just jury management and the way that he played the game that, that uh, kept people so bitter? So I never, so me and Josh, I mean, we had this final two. I always had to approach him for game conversations. Mm-hmm. I've asked him many times, listen, if I got to keep doing this, if you don't want to be a part of this, just let me know. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I don't want to keep pressing you for these conversations. So reassures me over and over and over. Um, final two, then I leave. That was like my only, that was really my horse in the race in, in the game. I was working on other stuff, but nothing is concrete. So bitter about that. Moose comes in. He also feels like Josh does him dirty, right? So, and then by the time summer comes in, it's like, you know, it's a violent storm. Like, it is like a, a hate train on Josh, right? And the only people that are really messing with Josh are uh, Gino and Marty. They, <laughs> they like, he never did them dirty. Right. You know, they never felt the type of way about it. And he had comp wins, right? But they, I mean, everyone was rooting for Kevin, right? So, if Kevin walked in, that was Josh was going to be their vote. That's why it was so surprising when Josh picked Kevin over. And to the viewers, I'm sure you guys are like, he has no idea what Kevin's been doing, right? And to us, we're like, it's a split if he picks Betty. Well, that's but th- see, that's the thing because like Josh did know what a lot of what Kevin was doing, right? Like he was with him the whole time. Like Kevin was explaining to Josh, like, uh, all right, so this is what I'm doing, um, and. Uh, and, and still, uh, like Kevin was, it was able to convince him like, nah, nah, dude, I haven't won any comps. I can't win this game. Uh, and so, um, it's totally wild, uh, especially because like the feeds go down for the final four eviction. Um, and so we hadn't even seen the, there was a conversation between Josh and Betty where Betty was like, I would like to evict Kevin over Helena. Um, and, uh, but you know, I'll, I'll do what you want, Josh. Uh, and Josh didn't say what his preference was at that point. And the feeds went down. We didn't know until the episode on Wednesday. Well, uh, I had interviewed Helena, so I knew, but most people didn't know until Wednesday who had been evicted. A lot of people assumed it was Kevin. Um, and so on Wednesday when Helena is evicted, like, whoa, but there's no way he still would be able to, now he needs to beat Josh in the final HOH. Um, and so, and then of course, nobody knew that that Josh, who was saying, I will take Betty, Betty, I will take you. The last time we saw, he was promising her, um, and uh, when when he cut Betty, it was uh, I I was streaming my reaction, and I was just I saw that. That's iconic <laughs> yeah. reaction. That's so funny. That's so funny. I don't. Um, do we know why? Uh, so so what Josh told me is that Kevin had been had been working on him and convinced because Kevin. So Kevin had been talking. And, and when I, so I did a, whole, a full recap of all four of the final four, their whole games. Um, and something that I noticed with Kevin's game in particular with Josh, because I thought it might be relevant, uh, is that for a long time from like day, like 30 or 40 something, um, Kevin had been putting it in Josh's head. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not going to win this game. Uh, and you know, people say that all the time, but like, uh, he never really deviated from that script. He always talked about how. Like, Lena's never been nominated. She's going to beat me. I'd rather lose to you, Josh. I'd be happy to sit next to you and lose, Josh. I'm just, I just want to be there at the end. Um, and, uh, and then as the game progressed, he started using the, the competition angle, which is usually, it's, it's a good argument because it's usually true. Um, yeah. That uh, it, it, he is the first winner since 2001 uh, in the U.S. edition to win the game without winning a single HOH. So, like, it's a reasonable argument to make to say, I haven't won any competitions. I can't win this thing. Uh, yeah. And so I think he really pressed that. Um, and the thing about the way that, like, I think Kevin was able to really get into Josh's head is that he was the devil on his shoulder. Uh, he was the he was the one being like, come on, Josh, let's have fun. Let's exactly. be let's be naughty. Let's be let's be uh, let's be bad boys. I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> um and so he really just like drew him in with the self-interest of like you i mean i know that like the right thing to do is to take betty but the smart thing to do is to uh, take me right and you know it's funny too you see that the comp thing too is because we really pushed that narrative early on like mm-hmm. it was there was a there was a tide shift basically when i when i won pov 
where I, I seen where things were going and big targets were leaving. Like, you know, there was – Jay never really got a, a good shot at it, but Jay had a big chance if they stayed. Um, you know, Kyle had left. And there was – it just seemed like these we were going down that path and they were being tar- – Marty was, Marty was targeted. Like, so I was like, we need to go after, you know, what I saw as non-competitors. And mm-hmm. that's like – otherwise, you're going to be in a final six and it's going to be – you're going to be the, the biggest target. And everyone else is going to be looking at you like salivating. So that was like, we really banged that into everyone's head week five, week six. Uh, so I could see how, you know, they were thinking how important comps were for the jury. Cause we were the, I was the one, you know, portraying that. And so was Moose and other people. So yeah, it's funny. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so tell me about, uh, Helena, um, because Helena goes out and forth, but for a long time, we thought she was going to make it to the final three. Um, let's assume that, uh, well, let's just like, uh, and I know that you obviously can't, you might not know exactly how everyone would have voted in, in certain circumstances, but, uh, we'll make some guesses when we can know for sure how you would have voted. Um, if Helena ends up in the final two with Kevin, I assume it goes to Kevin. Yeah, it goes to Kevin. Um, Uh, so why do we think that is like, what was it about? Like, um, obviously Kevin was, I think much better at the goodbye messages. Um, and, uh, and he was more out in front. Um, but, uh, but there, you know, there, there was some reason to believe like never been nominated, uh, had some good social bonds. Um, what was it that Helena was, was lacking in the jury's eyes? Um, I think the majority of the jury believed that Helena had lied to them um about game moves mm-hmm. so you know even just little stuff like i has asked selena you know if she knew that marty was gonna flip and put me up you know the, with the pov thing with kevin you know first person i talked to as soon as i get off the block Helena, come here did you know absolutely not no idea right um there was i think with gino and jay she had lied to them as well too about um the, and I haven't watched like the episode. I don't know exactly the, the votes and stuff, but they were saying in Jerry that I think she had lied to them about keeping Gino. Um, she, I think. Uh, during the double. Yeah, I think so. Or, think, or are you talking about what did the gummy bear situation? Um, the, the gummy bear situation. Yeah. I mean, she was lying. And again, like that was Kevin encouraging. Don't tell them until like, <laughs> yeah, she really and wanted then, to. So people, I think people felt like really rubbed the wrong way by that injury, especially, and then of course, Marty, mm-hmm. you know, Marty definitely felt the type of way about Helena, you know, um, as he was in jury and, and felt like she, you know, did him dirty as well too. So there was just, there was just a lot, like everyone felt like they were lied to at that point. Right. And Helena said, you know, afterwards, Helena said that she was, you know, definitely playing a character and that's not really her or whatever, but you know, at the moment, that's all you have to go off of. So I think Kevin sweeps that for sure. Yeah, I, and I, from my perspective, it felt like the the most damning thing for her and the jury was that, like, the narrative that she often played up in the house was, um, like, oh, like I don't have control over this, um, like, uh, and she often told people like Jace, like, uh, well, if Kevin does this, then I have to, I have to, I have to follow, um, and I feel like I feel like the same thing sort of happened with Josh, where it was like when Josh was betraying people, it was often for. Kevin's game more so than Josh's game and I feel like and correct me if I'm wrong but I feel like betrayals hurt more when it feels like you like you betrayed me for somebody else's game rather than your own like personal game uh so when you're telling me like oh well this person got me to do something that hurt you and I'm also like not being super chill about it uh like that's harder to get over than Kevin being like Look, I did what I had to do because you're so great and I had to win. Yeah, exactly. You want someone to own their shit, right? You want someone to make a decision, mm-hmm. to decide to do something, to and then live with that decision, right? You don't want to feel like someone was so impressionable or was made to do something and then like is like, hey, it wasn't me, it was, you know, it's like it's it's way worse, you mm-hmm. know? It makes you feel a type of way for sure. Yeah. Uh okay. So what about like uh like Helena versus Josh or something like that? That was our that was our nightmare scenario. That was that was the jury's nightmare scenario. We like when Helena came out. I'm like, what do you think? I was I was I lost my mind on jury deliberation. I was, Let's go! Like, like that was our nightmare scenario. Because honestly, I can't. I don't even know if I can answer that. I have no idea what we had done. You know, I think at that point we wanted someone to represent the season. Um, well, um, we felt like we were having a pretty good season, and and. You know, I, I feel like 
or I know for sure, I think Gino Jace, Marty, um, would have voted for Josh. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I think I, I, me, Moose was kind of starting to sway that way too. If that was the final four, a uh, final two. And I think I would have gone, you know, Josh's way too. So like, I, I, I do think Josh wins in that scenario, which yeah. is like insane to think about, but, um, yeah. Well, I, I do feel like, um, and, and you know, maybe like when, when she's explaining her and Kevin's game in the jury deliberation, um, like maybe she might have been able to get a little bit of that out in a final two speech. Uh, could she have, you know, knowing what Josh ends up saying in his final two, uh, to, uh, you know, speeches, um, do you think maybe she's able to kind of be like, no, look, I'm the player, or is it probably not enough time? You know, it, it probably, I think if Kevin came in too and put in a little work, oh, yeah. you know, if Kevin came in, put in some work and said, yo, me only had a thing called the ghosties. And you know, the way Kevin's really smart. So like he just, he would explain his game and her game. And and maybe at that point he gives her credit, maybe some of the credit for stuff he did, you know, and maybe we were like, well, we had no idea what kind of game Helena was playing. Right. Maybe then, but yeah. on what we know now, no. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, that of course the, the, the biggest one is, uh, is Josh and Betty. Um, if uh, the, obviously the biggest thing being Josh cuts, Kevin, takes Betty. Uh, this is the, the alternate universe where he does not, does not take Kevin. Um, and, and again, like we know, we know ultimately what Josh says in his, in his final two speeches, I feel like Betty would have performed pretty well in the final two speech. I feel like she would have been, uh, she would have had that passion. Um, what, how do we think that goes? Yeah. Betty's very articulate. Like she, you know, she would have put something special together for sure on there on the speech. Um, yeah, it's a hundred thousand dollar question, man. It, it was a hundred thousand dollar decision for sure. Because, you know, the votes were, you know, by my calculations four four, and based on my conversations, it's me, Moose, Summer, uh, Helena that for, Betty. Go for Betty. And then it's Josh, Jace, uh, Marty. And I believe Kevin that would go the other way. Right. Mm-hmm. Is what I, was what I'm thinking. So I don't know. I don't know what Kevin would do. I, I haven't asked him that question. I, he doesn't have to answer if he doesn't want to. But um, yeah, it's four four, and I think Canada splits it. And and being outside and seeing kind of you know Betty's popularity and stuff like that, you know, maybe Betty takes Canada's vote. I think I think she probably would, um, especially considering that Josh didn't get the vote over Kevin. I mean, we assumed that Betty would get the vote of the three of them. Um, and obviously, like uh, I don't think there was like I don't think Kevin was unpopular. Uh, and it's always, it's so it, honestly, it's impossible to know with, uh, sometimes we think the vote will go one way and then, you know, and then Marty wins, uh, Canada's favor. Uh, so, um, so who knows, who knows, Everyone but knows I'm actually, Canada's favorite. <laughs> everyone knows that. Okay. Terry, we don't have to, we don't have to tippy toe or outside the house now at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, what uh, like you know voting machines they've got set up for uh, for Marty. But... Billboards, <laughs> radio ads. I don't know. I'm hearing some stuff. I don't know. Um, I and... spend ten grand to make ten grand. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like you know what I'm saying? A couple <laughs> billboards here and there. I'll leave that alone. But um, anyways, uh, okay. Let's say Kevin wins that final HOH and takes Betty. Uh, is it still Kevin? Oh yeah. We didn't even think about that scenario. Oh man. Um, I don't know. That's a tough one. That's a really tough one. Maybe like a six, three or something like that. Yeah. Um, or six, uh, five, four, uh, was nine votes. Yeah. Five, four, maybe mm-hmm. it could have been, it could have been that close. Like, I think, I think I, we still would have gone, I think I still might've gone the Betty route. Yeah. Kevin would have had the one HOH. Cause I mean, comps, it, it, there's a point where, you know, if, if both people haven't done you wrong for the majority of the people in jury, then you look, then you start looking the second point would be comp wins or performance in the game that way, you know? So yeah, it's, I mean, it would have been, it would have been, I don't even know, man. That's well, a tough one. So I'm assuming Gino, Jace, Marty, Helena, are all locked in for Kevin? I believe so. Yeah, they would be. They would have been Kevin for sure. Okay, and then, and then Josh. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it's tough. Like, maybe Josh would have been. 
maybe Josh would have been team Betty. Like, because Kevin. Yeah, especially him. if Kevin just cut him. Yeah. Yeah. If Kevin cuts him, he's Betty. So, like, you know, then, then the, I don't, I don't know. Summer, Summer loved Kevin's game too. And Summer was a Kevin fan. So it's mm-hmm. like, we just don't know. And Moose, yeah, it, it's tough to say, but maybe a 4 4, but I think that one is more likely to be like a, like a 6 3 situation. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, so that's that's it. You you get you get through the season. How was the uh, how was the after party stuff? Yeah, it was really cool. We uh, yeah, we get out and you get your phone and I mean it doesn't stop vibrating for thirty minutes, and it's just like the most surreal experience. You get recognized in like the lobby and the parking lot and stuff. Like just like weird stuff. Went to the bank yesterday. Someone's an eye, but anyways. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it was really fun. I got to meet a lot of the alumni. I mean, a lot of them I didn't know, but I got to meet them. They're really cool. Um, obviously, all the season nine people, like, I was definitely like fanboying a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Spicy V, I missed her at the door. That was a whole thing. Uh, she was also the first juror. She was also uh, day 41. So, you know, we connected on that. Um, did she know, Did she say... Uh, the audacity. You had the audacity to the not audacity. see her. <laughs> <laughs> No, we got, uh, I gave her a big hug when I seen her and uh, I said, where's, where's my man at? Where's my man at? So, um, it was really cool. That's like just the most surreal thing. Like that's, you know, just seeing that, uh, Jed was really cool too. Um, there was everyone, like everyone was really, really cool. Like, I just enjoyed everyone's company, Dougie and all these people. They were like, took me under their wing a little bit and, and, uh, kind of gave me some tips and tricks and stuff. Um, yeah, I had a call with Jed, uh, yesterday too, just talking through stuff. So yeah, they're, they're really supportive. Like everyone's you know, we have a group chat with everyone, so they're just really supportive on kind of the next steps. Yeah. Make, making any pregame alliances for All-Stars? Yeah. We definitely, <laughs> hey, I can't say them, though. I, that's the problem is this will be used against me for sure. I got little tactics and stuff that I would do if I went in for All-Stars. I got uh, – and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to tell everyone. I was like, wait, that's stupid. Like, that's, that's dumb. But uh, – Oh man, Eric Eric Stein uh, from the U.S. who played in season eight um, for years didn't didn't even do like uh, barely said a word about Big Brother because he was like, when I go to All Stars, I can't let them know. And then, yeah. he, was ne- and then he was never brought back. Never won. Uh, yeah. So no, there's there's um yeah if I'm ever graced with the uh, the the luxury of playing All Stars again, and I'm, I'm definitely gonna need some time. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, if people want me in there. Or if they want me back, then I'd definitely do it. I feel like you've got a, a good shot. I'm hoping. I'm yeah. hoping, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, so what? Uh, what now? What's uh, What's the plan? Yeah, I took this week off. Um, trying to tie up some loose ends on. I mean, I got to do my taxes. I talked about it on the show oh, a lot. Boy. <laughs> I was like, yo, did anyone else do their taxes? Like, you know. <laughs> but um, I got to do that. I got to massive thing of mail i gotta i'm just you know chilling out taking it all in doing some lives with um some of the other castmates i got work next week um new dealership so that'll be just a whole nother undertaking it's just like i think it's like eight times the size of our last one so just trying to figure my life out that way and yeah we'll see see what's in store this oh i'm going to i'm going to greece in august with gino oh yeah we're doing it uh, just you know, just you know, be wary of the gummy bears. Yes, I uh, I will. Ha- I'm gonna have to protect him um, from those. He's uh, and I also got to get in the gym because I can't be on the beaches in Greece next to that guy. <laughs> that's like a yeah. That's a see you later. I might have to get one of those shirts that just has the abs on it. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just avoid the beaches. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, Herman, thank you for uh, for doing this. Thanks for having me, buddy. This is uh, this is a pleasure. It's amazing to meet you, like in a kind of less formal situation than we did last time. Yeah, so. it's all man. It's always so awkward to to have to because to, I am like I, I take it very seriously. I am like uh, like I cannot react to what you're saying. I yes. can't follow up to anything. It's just like all right, next question. Yes. Okay. I'm next like, question. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> especially because like you know because i know that you're you, you want something like this yeah. is your taste of like the outside world how do people view me and i'm like i can't yeah, i can't yeah. give you anything you did uh, a good job. You did a good job. thank you thank you um any anything else that uh you wanted to to talk about um i think you really you really covered it like oh there was um 
Yeah, one of the big things I learned too in Jury was the that there was like they had like a five person uh, alliance with uh, Gino, Jace, um, Kevin, Marty, and Helena. Yeah. So I thought, you know, everyone says I, I think it was on Monday they said I had the votes. You said that one night before I had the votes, but I really had no idea that the five of them were were kind of working. So yeah, they had that alliance, but it like um, I think even uh, this is this is a dumb alliance. Nobody really, nobody really. <laughs> like, like Marty was the person who was the most invested in that alliance. Like it was mostly for Marty's sake. Uh, Gino and Jace were always looking elsewhere. They were looking at you. They were looking at uh, Josh and Betty for a while. And Kevin was like working overtime to keep them in because they they didn't like Marty, especially after the double eviction. But right. it was set up as the five. Like that was the point of that split vote was that those five would then become an alliance. Um, right. They got a lot closer after that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but then again, it was like it was kind of messed up because Kevin didn't pick. Because Kevin was also Kevin was taught. I love the showmans. I want to. I want the showmans to go so far. Um, and then he didn't pick them in the safety chain. They were like, "What the hell? What happened to we love the showmans?" Uh, and he was right. like, "Oh, I didn't. I wasn't even thinking. Oh man." Um, so I feel like he got he got such a pass on stuff that he did sometimes. You know, like. How you know? I feel like he was in everyone's ear a lot, and like you know, kind of swaying their conversations. But how did his name never come up? As Kevin told me this, or this is what Kevin decided to do. Like, how does that not come up ever? It was um, it, it so it did come up occasionally. Uh, like for instance, Kyle was really like after the blindside. Kyle was like that Kevin guy. I think he just snowed me, but nobody was really listening to Kyle at that point. Yes, um, yes, yes. And uh, and Marty actually um, on his uh, on his on the gummy bear HOH was like he had caught Kevin and Josh talking uh, at one point. Um, yeah. And he was like, oh, I just caught them talking. Uh, and he was like, I think Kevin and Josh are secretly working together. Um, and it was like Mar Marty's Marty's right. Marty, like Mar Marty's actually got something. And he was like, I think if I if I put a, up somebody other than Kevin, he'll flip the vote. Um, he was like c directly. We thought this is this is it. Kevin's not going to get his way. He's not going to go home, but he's not going to get his way this week. And then somehow uh, he manages to get Marty just um, he really he really worked on Marty to try to convince Marty to believe that uh, that Jace would flip the vote if he went up on the block. Um, and so. Marty was like, well, if I put Kevin up, Jace might flip. If I put Jace up, Kevin might flip. So him convincing him that Jace might flip is what saved his game, obviously. Yeah. Right? Like, cause Jace would never have flipped. No, no. Uh, he knew. So him and Helena talked about this. They, they said, we, we we're not going to push Marty because if we push him, um, then he'll, he'll like, he won't react well. Uh, yeah. so they were just like, just don't put us up. And they let Jace be like, you got to put Kevin up. And then they were like, well, we really think Jace wants Kevin gone because why else would she be pushing so hard for Kevin to go? Right. Um, and so, uh, yeah, they 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 they, they worked it hard. Um, Incredible. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the the five the five alliance like uh, like Jace and Gino uh, they 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 evicted you more so because they were in with Josh and Betty than they were in with the okay, five okay. in my in my eyes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I trust your opinion, but. <laughs> I mean, uh, they might say different, so, <laughs> so who knows? But they they definitely were not uh, uh, with with Marty, and that's that's the thing too. The the whole secret veto situation where uh, J Jace had the opportunity to take that shot at at Marty um, and didn't, uh, which um, man, we're, I mean, that's a question that only I think Jace can answer. But but basically, when so when Helena won the veto. There was initially a push to be like, oh, let's try to get Helena to use it so we can backdoor Marty. Um, but Helena and and specifically Kevin were like, OK, we don't want people to be mad that we're not using that Helena's not using the veto. So let's convince them that it's the right thing to do to not backdoor Marty. And at this point, Josh has spilled the tea. Oh, I'm spilling the tea to Kevin. To Kevin about the backdoor plan. So he knows that if the veto is used, that there's a backdoor plan. So he's but he's but they haven't told him. So he's like. He's be like, well, it would it would be a really bad idea to do that, obviously, because then you'd be the next target, Gino, um, right. and you know stuff like oh, that. Bigger, keep a bigger target in the house. Okay. Exactly, and so like they kind of got like they I think they got used to the idea of like okay, the veto's not going to be used, Marty's not going to go. Uh, that can that can work. We can make that work. Okay, Marty's not leaving. Moose is leaving. That okay, we we can see how that can work for us. And then when the opportunity present, present, presented itself, it was like, hmm. 
maybe we should maybe we should just leave it as it is, right? Um, right. I, I I know they did tell me that. You're right. Gino Gino did tell me that um, when he got there before Jason Jury, mm-hmm. he was like, I "Saw Marty as a bigger target. Everyone wanted Marty out. If for my game, you know, I was next up." And yeah, it made sense. Yeah, and then and then Kevin and Helena were able to convince Josh, Betty, and Summer that the, the plan was to was Moose all along or 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 a Josh backdoor, right? Like uh, right. That the, because she didn't use it, obviously they never intended to backdoor Marty and uh, they cannot be trusted. Ah, yeah. I can't wait to watch. <laughs> is that is most of that stuff on the show or on the lives? So that that move in particular, I think, was one of the things that wasn't covered as much. We do get a little bit of it, but like it was that was that was one of their master strokes was convincing uh, because at that point, Jace and Betty were starting to reconnect a little bit. Um, and it was like, oh, man, if they connect again, then we're screwed. So we need to we need to really drive a wedge there. And obviously, Betty wins that HOH ends up targeting Jace. Uh, and if she hadn't, that, that would have been would have been disastrous um, because at that point, Betty could definitely work with Jace and probably should have. Yes, um, definitely. So. Uh, so, yeah. And, and Jace had used the the fact that she didn't use the secret veto with Marty the week before to be like, don't put us up. Because look, we had the secret pet. Obviously, we weren't going to backdoor you, so it worked in their favor initially. But then Gino goes anyway, and now yeah. Kevin and Helena go to Betty, and they say, "We know that Jace had the secret power of veto. We bet she won't tell you, uh, and here's why: uh, the plan was to backdoor Josh if the veto was used. And from their perspective, they were like, Gino and Jace were telling us to use the veto all week long, and in reality, they would have gone behind our backs and put Josh up on the block." Um, and the proof is that they had the ability to use a veto and they didn't because they were like moose leaves. That's fine too. Uh, yeah. it was never Marty. Um, and so then when Betty talks to Jace at, in the final four, um, Jace is like, look, my whole thing is that I'm honest and I'm willing to work with you moving forward. Like screw these other three. They're clearly working together. Uh, and Betty's like, can you just tell me one thing? Did you, ha- did you have the secret power veto? So, oh crap. Uh, you, uh, yes, yeah. I did, but um, so it was, uh, I, I can't believe. Did Marty tell you about it? How did you find? Like it was, uh, it was bad. It was bad. Oh, and then that was done. Yeah, it was done. Oh my goodness, brutal. <sighs> yeah, too funny. It's a good season, man. And and I will tell you, uh, as somebody that that is you know an avid live feeder, um, the 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 Canadian version of the show, especially doesn't always do the best job of representing what's actually happening. They did a fantastic job this season. Um, they really captured a lot of uh, of what was happening and a lot of it's very accurate. Uh, and the show is is very good. It's, uh, I mean, I, I think it's the best season of the of the show. Uh, I think uh, it, it was very, very good. Love that. Love yeah. that. Glad to be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you again for uh, for doing this. This is so much fun. Yeah, thanks. Buddy. I appreciate you inviting me on. All right. Um, all right. There we go. Sign off. Stir the pop poppy signing off. You know what it was <laughs> when you signed up. There you go. That was Herman. Thank you all so much for joining us for this interview. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's always fun to to chat with uh, with the house guests. Uh, like they usually have questions for me. I always enjoy seeing like their reactions to some of the things that were happening in the game that they might not have been aware of yet. Um, and uh, and yeah, just get it like getting their perspective uh it was it was really fun herman's great to talk to so uh yeah hopefully you enjoyed this again we've hopefully got some more of these interviews coming soon so stay tuned make sure you're subscribed to the youtube channel if that's where you're watching this or the podcast feed if that's where you're listening to it and uh you can also find me over on twitch twitch.tv slash taryn armstrong hanging out streaming things like episodes of shows like survivor or big brother uh, playing games, chatting, whatever, whatever. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Armstrong Terran, where I will keep you informed of everything that's going on if you uh, if you need that. We've also got some circle coverage going on. The Survivor Stockwatch is still running as we speak, and the final Big Brother Canada roundtable will take place probably sometime in the next couple of weeks once we get through some of these post game interviews. So that's what we got for you. Thank you so much again for joining me here today. And I will see all of you next time.